What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because I mean like I've been really excited this last week because we've been doing a lot of post ban list stuff and I love when we have new ban lists because there's a lot of theory crafting there's a lot of deck building involved and I really enjoy that it's my favorite part of the game honestly but that aside today we're doing Dino Morphia for the February 2023 format this of course is going to be a format focused on Kostura it's post Photon Hypernova and there's so many good decks out there and in Dino Morpheus case, it can play some of the best floodgates in the game against the deck like Kostura. So I wanted to be showing off this deck profile updated post ban list so you guys can play it in today's format and be successful with it. Now, if you guys enjoy these videos, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one. We upload five days a week here on the channel, but we upload a whole 10 videos, five long videos, five short videos. You guys are going to get a ton of different forms of content. So I hope you guys enjoy. I really don't want to take up too much of your time. So with that, let's get right into the deck profile. All right. So just before we get into the deck profile here today i'm going to say a couple things this main deck i think is really really powerful but the thing with this deck is this side deck is also going to be very very important when you're building the side deck so just keep that in mind i'm not showing you guys an exact side deck right over here i'm just showing you guys some options that you guys can be playing in your side deck i'll talk about it when we get to it but just keep that in mind the side deck for a deck like dinomorphia is really important because there's going to be so many different decks coming up in today's format but the main deck is built to beat costura all right so keep that in mind because that is what i think is going to be the best deck in the format and the whole point of building these rogue decks is to make them competitive and to make them competitive you want to be able to beat the best deck in the format which i think right now is going to be costura all right so let's start thinking off with three dinomorphia theresia of course you got to be playing three you normal summon this you get to a trap very very powerful we're playing three diplos honestly this card is not the greatest card. However, you have to be playing three because at the moment it's the only other Dinomorphia monster name. And so for that reason, you gotta be playing three Diplos because you're gonna need the other name. So that's why we're playing three and three, the three Theresia, three Diplos. Then of course, we're playing three Dinomorphia Frenzy as well as three Dinomorphia Domain. These are your fusion traps for the deck. You have to be playing three and three. And then we're playing the one Alert. This is kind of like a Monster Reborn for you as well as the one Sonic, which is also really nice. This is a spell or trap negate. All right, so these are it for the Dinomorphia trap cards this is all you're playing and you guys might be wondering why are you playing such a low count it's because you really need to fit cards that are really good against today's metagame in this deck and that's why we're going to be playing a ton of hand traps which you guys are going to see and those hand traps include three ash blossom three imperm as well as three effect failure now you guys might be wondering and again i'm going to bring this up why we're playing hand traps over playing something like trap trick plus other traps or just more floodgates well keep in mind evenly matched is such a powerful card and you really don't want to lose to evenly matched this deck already sets up a skill drain on its own the boss monster itself is a floodgate so setting this up with four or five sets sometimes is not really worth it if you're going to lose to a single card like evenly so for that reason i think hand traps are really important in today's format but another thing i will say is ash imper and valor are all really good into the costure matchup so that's why we're playing the nine hand traps right over here and i really think these are some of the best nine hand traps you guys can be playing nibiru is another good one i just decided not to play nibiru because it doesn't make a lot of sense when your aim is to go first and set up a skill skill drain and then if you're going to be breaking your own skill drain with the bureau it's not really worth it right so that's why i think these nine hand traps over here the three ash three imperm and three valor are really really important then of course we're playing three fossil dig searches you into your dino monsters because your dino morphia theresia and your diplos are both dinos so for that reason we're playing the non once per turn roto which is absolutely insane so that's why we're playing three fossil dig three prosperity for even more consistency again this card is going to help you get into something like your trap cards which are going to fusion summon for you it's going to help you get into your solemn judgment which can protect your cards it can, it'll help you get into your goes and match which is another floodgate so that's why we're playing the prosperity it gets you into any piece that you're missing in your hand essentially and then we're playing the one called by the grave i reintroduced this into the deck because again ash blossom is running around in today's format so for that reason i decided to play the one called by at least protect their traps a little bit here so the one called by the grave is really powerful and then we're playing three book of moon now you guys might be wondering why are you playing book of moon over something like book of eclipse well keep in mind this deck is still a deck that wants to go first and if you're setting up your skill drain let's just say and you're setting up you know a bunch of other cards you're not going to be losing to Kostura anyways because Rexstrom on its own is just insane against Kostura let's just start there but the other thing I want to mention is if you're setting this up let's say you're going first and you end up setting your Book of Eclipse Book of Eclipse changes all monsters on the field to defense position all right so it's going to end up Book of Mooning your own Rexstrom which can be very detrimental whereas Book of Moon even though you're only targeting one single card it's still very powerful because if your opponent has two sevens on the board and you Book of Moon one of them then they're kind of still in a stuck position where they can't exceed summon 
they can't overlay, etc., etc. Right? So you're kind of forcing them to have multiple extenders. And on top of that, if you draw multiple Book of Moons, that's still very powerful as well. So that's why we're playing the Book of Moons. Another card that I want to talk about is Book of Lunar Eclipse. That's a card where you discard a card and then you Book of Moon two cards your opponent controls. That's another very powerful card in this deck. But again, when you're playing a deck like this one that's focused around traps and hand traps, you don't have a lot of discard fodder. So that's the reason why we're not playing Lunar Eclipse. So I hope I explained that kind of well there. But the three Book of Moon, I think, in the main deck makes a lot of sense. We're playing the one Harpy's Feather Duster. When you're forced to go second, this card is really good into a lot of different things. A lot of people disregard that the Prime Planet for Kashtura has a lot of really good effects. Same thing with your Kashtura Birth. So getting rid of those kind of cards does help you. Prime Planet does have a disruption. So why would you just want to be disrupted by a card like that, right? So Harpy's is really good. And again, against a lot of Rogue matchups, this is pretty good as well. Then we're playing the three Gozen match. You're playing only Dark Monsters in this deck, which is absolutely insane. And Gozen match is insane into the Kostra format because Unicorn is a Wind, Fenrir is an Earth. I'm pretty sure Riseheart is a Dark, if I'm not mistaken. But then, you know, Shangri-La is a Fire. I can't remember what a Riseheart is. A Riseheart might also be a Dark. But regardless, they're kind of stuck. As soon as they commit to one of the Kostra monsters, they're stuck under Gozen match, which is really, really nice. And then we're playing three Solemn Judgment, of course, to protect our board to give us another form of disruption. So Solemn Judgment has multi-purpose here. Goes the match is really good, of course, with the Kashtura. And all these cards essentially do one of two things. You're setting up either a Floodgate with Rexstrom and the Dynamorphia cards, of course. You're setting up Hand Traps, where even if they stop your combo for some reason, you still have Hand Traps to stop your opponent from playing. Same thing with something like Book of Moon. And then you have Consistency cards like Prosperity and Fossil Dig. And then you have your Floodgates over here and your Protection. So you guys can see, this deck does a little bit of everything, which is really nice. And it does a little bit of everything really well still, which is also really powerful. Then for the extra deck here, we are playing three Rexstrom. Of course, this is a boss monster of your deck if you can set this card up honestly with a single trap even if you're just setting up something as simple as rexstrom plus a judgment or rexstrom plus like a book of moon you're just going to be winning the game because a lot of people can't really out the rexstrom in today's format in general really this card is just very powerful so that's why we're playing three rexstrom of course three catrogena catrogena is another card that helps you get into your rexstrom but eventually in the mid to late game this card becomes really good when it's on your board because it becomes a very big beater for you it can help you go for game then we're playing the three stealth bergia why are we playing three stealth bergia over two so I used to be playing two self Bridgia. The reason I'm playing three now is because against something like Kostra, where they can banish some of your cards from your extra deck, you want to have extras of cards in your extra deck so that even if they banish one or two of them, then you can still play, right? So that's why we're playing the three self Bridgia. And then we're playing two Doka as well as two Lagia. If you ever see yourself in a situation where you have Therese and Diplos on board or multiple level fours on board, they're not really doing that much for you, then you can make Doka and Lagia, which are other forms of disruption. And again, we're playing two and two, so we don't lose something like the Kostra format where they banish from one and one and then you're kind of stuck right so that's why we're playing the two and two and then we're playing the one shangri-la and the one mirror jade why are we playing these two there's two reasons one because we had extra flex spots in the extra deck and two it's because i think one of the best cards you can be playing in today's format in the side deck is ghost reaper and winter cherries ghost reaper and winter cherries is a card that essentially when you're going second against any deck specifically i think branded and kostra are going to be two of the best decks in today's format and you're just able to hit their boss monsters of the deck they're going to have a really hard time playing so kostra shangri-la is technically not the boss monster but if they can't get into this then they have a hard time going into their arise heart they have a hard time being able to lock you out they won't really be able to lock you out so for that reason shangri-la is really good card to hit mirror jade is another really good card to hit as well you can argue with this you can hit uh, of a couple other cards in the extra deck for branded but i think mirror jade is the best one because at the end of the day they want to get to mirror jade right and if you hit another card in their extra deck they'll just end up getting to mirror jade in another way right so that's why i think mirror jade is the best one to hit and of course shangri-la against kashtura so i think cherries is one of those cards that's mandatory in the side deck that's it for the main deck and the extra deck though i'm going to talk about the side deck just a little bit now so here we have ghost reaper which i already talked about i think this card is very important three curry card divine carnate this card is a card and again i'm not sure 100 percent with this card but it's just something that i want to show you guys and talk to you guys about because this card is really powerful because it's kind of like nibiru and remember how earlier i was talking about nibiru is not that great in this deck because you don't want to get rid of your own rex drum well the thing is with this card it is really powerful because when you use it as a nibiru you're not going to be tributing your own monsters which is really nice so that's kind of why I like the Divine Carnet. It's an option for you. But the thing is, it's a fire, so it doesn't play well into something like Goes and Match. That's not a huge issue because if you do have something like Goes and Match up, anyways, then you're going to be winning the game. But it's just kind of one of those cards that's really good going second. Another card that's really 
good going second. I talked about it earlier as well as Book of Eclipse. In the main deck, the reason I like Book of Moon is because if you're going first, which you want to go first all the time, you want to be setting the Book of Moon. It's kind of better than the Book of Eclipse. But if you know you're going second, Book of Eclipse is another very powerful card that you know you guys can be playing, especially because getting all your cards banished in this deck can be very detrimental. So that's why I like Book of Eclipse. And lastly, a card that I'm not showing you guys here, but I kind of want to talk about is Anti Spell. Anti Spell is another really powerful floodgate against the Kostura matchup, not being able to activate the field spell, not being able to activate Kostura Birth. Those cards are very powerful. And this deck, of course, being a trap based deck, you guys can always find room for the anti spell in the side deck. And then you guys can swap out other cards in the deck that you guys feel like might not be as powerful, right? So just keep that in mind. I just want to give you guys different options. The side deck here is not as important. I think just cherries is very important. I 100% recommend playing this. Otherwise, the side deck, you just have to build very strategically. If you guys are taking this to a locals, just keep in mind what your locals metagame is like. Everyone's locals metagame is a little bit different. And so for that reason, you don't want to be building a side deck for a single matchup that you might not face at your locals, right? So just keep that in mind. I just want to give you guys options. But again, I think this deck is very powerful. I think it's very good into today's format because something like Rexdrum just shuts down the Kostura boards, shuts down the branded boards. So that's why I really like this card. That's why I really like this deck. And I definitely think you guys should be trying this out for yourselves. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. That is my take on Dynamorphia for this upcoming format. Of course, we all know the ban list just came out. Photon Hypernova just came out. There's so many different things that can progress and happen throughout the format. But for right now, where we think the format is going, or at least where I personally think the format is going, this build is going to be really, really powerful. And it's really good because it's going to be able to combat the best decks in today's format. Now, if you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content just like this one. We upload five days a week here on the channel but we do a whole 10 videos five long videos five shorts so you guys are going to get a ton of different kinds of content so i hope you guys enjoyed today's video thank you guys all for watching i appreciate every single one of you and with that thank you signing out peace